Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So today we're going to explore uh, in more detail the conscious feeling and conscious movement and how that relates to Wei Wu Wei. And this is something that uh, come up a lot lately. A lot of people have questions about how do I function? Okay, I can get to the superconscious state, but how do I function? How do I how do I live my life and, and be able to do that at the same time? And so we're gonna play a little bit with that and 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 take it apart. And uh, but first I would like to get things warmed up, get things started. We have a request for some of the exercises we did last week. And uh, so we're gonna play with that first and then we'll uh, get into some talky stuff and then into more Dewey stuff. Okay, so why don't you stand up and we'll... Uh... Okay, so we're just gonna do a few very uh, simple exercises to, to get things moving. But first we're going to, why don't you step out and we will first establish our three pillars just cause that's what we like to do here. And uh, so feel the balls of your feet, allow your, your weight to kind of settle down and spread throughout your feet, but with the primary focus on the ball, feel the toes touching the, touching the floor. And you just allow that to kind of settle in. Knees are unlocked. And reach with the crown of your head. So we're activating the knee wand. When we do that, open the jade pillow gate, tuck in the chin. So jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. reaching up with the crown, reach down, actually allow your lower back to relax, allow your, your coccyx to drop. So we have the Wei Lu point on the coccyx and it's reaching down while your crown is reaching up. So you're lengthening the spine, creating space between the vertebrae. This lengthens the dural tube allows the cerebral spinal fluid to flow more freely. We're unkinking the dural tube. Allows more circulation in the brain. Point your index fingers and feel, feel your fingers. You can wiggle a little bit. Just make sure you're getting that sense of reaching Gently reaching with your fingers and feeling that. Reach out a little bit with your elbows and you're opening the shoulders when you do that. Yeah, open the shoulder gates. Reach the elbow gates, the shoulder gates. And then you wanna release the, the quad. So you're feeling the quad opening, you're allowing yourself to sink down Okay, so the, we're going to start with the uh, lifting the sky. Take a deep, deep breath, inhale as you carry the chi. Rotate your palms upward, reach up over your head, sink, hold your breath. Reaching with your elbows, reaching with your wrists, reach with your fingers, and then exhale. Reach out. Really feel the connection throughout your body as you do that. Inhale, point, reach, open the joints. Reach with the crown, reach with the fingers, and exhale. Carry. 
Feel, slowly feel your arms opening, reaching up. Hold. Arms are rounded. Exhale. Reaching out, opening the joints as you do that. Feel your arms coming down. Feel all the changes as your body goes to different positions. Inhale, point, reach. Open and exhale. Inhale. Hold, sink. Exhale. Inhale, point, and reach. Open the joints. And exhale, relax. Feel the motion in stillness. Feel your circulation. Feel your heartbeat. Okay, now we're going to do embracing the moon. Exhale as you bow forward. Inhale, reach out as you come up. Hold the moon in your hands, arch your back, hold your breath. Reach and exhale. Inhale, point, reach, open, and exhale, bow. Inhale, bend your knees, come up, reaching. Hold the moon, arch your back, hold your breath. And exhale. Inhale, point, reach. Open. And exhale. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale, relax. Again, bring your awareness to your internal environment. And you don't have to identify it. You don't have to think about it. You just bring your awareness to it. Feel the myriad sensations that are occurring inside your skin. your skin, the 
Step in. Deep breath. Have a seat, please. Okay, so. You know, we had a question coming in, you know, what can we do to enhance our ability to meet the moment, to uh, be here now and to enhance presence? And I think that's, that's really appropriate for what I wanted to talk about tonight. So I'd like to uh, kind of weave that into the, into the conversation. So, The, um, in, in terms of in Taiji language, we kind of include that under the heading of Wei Wu Wei. Wei Wu Wei is a Chinese term, which literally means do, not or no, and then do. So Wei, W-E-Y-E-I, and Wu, W-U. So those, those words, you know, so the, the so, the different ways of translating it, but the, the one that appeals to me most is the idea of doing based in non-doing. So that is, if you, it's a strategy, it's a shorthand term for a strategy for getting outside of the fixed way that your nervous system likes to work, what evolution has programmed you to do. And, and that is to respond with, what do I do? That's, you know, that's, that's the first thing that, that the nervous system wants to go to. Uh, whenever it encounters any kind of challenge, any kind of novelty or, or potential threat to survival or whatever, it says, oh, what do I do about this? And so there's that, that tendency to, to default to that which is fine um, up to a certain point, because what happens is then if you have, if you live long enough, you uh, accumulate a bunch of algorithms which enable you to, to handle these situations. You sort of plug in to the, uh, to the algorithm and it says, okay, this is what I do in this situation. And so you, you react in the way that you always react. The Gong Fu swims against this particular current it says, we're gonna do the opposite. We are, rather than just react, we are going to actually consciously activate our, uh, our body mind in such a way as to create the best possible outcome. And uh, the, uh, the tendency to react kind of falls into what neurologists, you know, have kind of uh, have a formula basically that says neurons that fire together wire together. And that's the that's the formula. That is, if you perform a particular action, you think a particular thought, you have a particular emotion, whatever, and there are there are certain neural uh, responses to that, and if you do those many times. The nervous system says, hey, I got it. We'll just substitute an algorithm in there. We'll just plug in there. And we're going to just get a bunch of these neurons. We'll wire them together so that we can do this even faster. So that you have these, you're able to do these repetitive activities, these uh, 
uh, familiar activities, you're able to do them without thinking. You just just do them. And you know, one of the colloquially it's called muscle memory sometimes. And a lot of people in a lot of sports and things like that train muscle memory. They want to they want to get it so that they got the uh, they're able to to do this thing and they don't have to think about it. They just plug in and and, and they just do what they're programmed to do. Kung Fu says, nah, we're going to do it a different way. And that is, instead of creating that, we're going to create the neuronal activity rather than being like kind of a linear process of just getting these things, we're just kind of stretch these like uh, Christmas tree lights and line them up so that they're plugged in in, in a linear progression. It says, we're going to look at this more as a field phenomenon. And this is this is my interpretation, so take it, take it for what it's worth. My interpretation is we're looking at it as a field phenomenon, and that is we're going to familiarize ourselves with so many different patterns, and so that we are able to play with things and be able to reconfigure our, our nervous system spontaneously. And, um, you know, I, the image I like to, to compare it to is like a... Um, uh, if you are learning to play by reading music, you're, you know, you're sight reading, you're, you, you know that you see that particular note, you know how to, to hit that on your instrument, piano or guitar or whatever. And so there's, there's an immediate, by, by familiarizing with that, with that, you have the sight of the note and the, and the uh, execution is simultaneous. There's very, very little delay between the two. And so you're actually able to read a whole line of music and just be able to just know, know exactly because you practice it a number of times. You they've wired together, you know. Whereas in a from a, a different perspective, say let's say a um, improvisational jazz where you're listening in real time and you have to create something new. You're not just looking at a page and trying to replicate the notes on the page. You are trying to say, oh, I'm going to create something which has never been heard before in this moment. And so you're, it's more of a field phenomenon and you're actually, your nervous system is not just looking for familiar patterns to, to go to, although that is part of the process, it, you're, still, you're still creating, you're, create, you're creating something brand new. And then you have to be, to do that, you have to be really in the present moment to make that happen. You also do if you're, you're a really good classical musician as well, but the, uh, there's a different, a different mindset involved there. And what we're talking about here with, with this is in the way we way is that we, to get to that point, to be able to move into that place where you're able to function with this as a field rather than just a rote set of, of physical commands, we have to be able to move into a superconscious state. And so to be able to meet the moment, it requires a leap of faith that you're not going to die if you move in, if you try to operate from super consciousness. And you try it a few times and you, your faith is generally rewarded. You don't die. And, uh, but you have to, since you're overcoming millions of years of evolution to do that, it is, you know, it requires some effort, requires some time and effort, a gong fu to make it to make it happen. So to make that transition a little easier, yeah, you know, I want to walk you through some different steps there, because each step of the way, it um, even though we get more complex, we're still dealing with the same essential components. And I want to emphasize that this is not something other. This is not something like, oh, yes, whenever I uh, am a master, then I'll be able to do this. It's like, no, no, it's something you, anyone can do at any time, just have to be willing to do it. The mastery comes from being able to do it at will and under, you know, challenging circumstances. But the it is both the alpha and the omega. It is the start and the finish. It is 
you know, the beginning and the end. That is, we start with this, we end with this, and along the way, we have a wonderful ride and a beautiful adventure. But we want to get to that, that, uh, that quality of, of awareness that comes with the, with presence. So, and that means when you're present, you're consciously, volitionally in now. You are, you're locating yourself in time and space. You're saying here, now. And when you do that, cool stuff happens. If you don't do that, things kind of, you're kind of a leaf in the wind. But the more you can locate yourself in space and time, the more you're able to, to have presence and be from there be able to generate power. That is, and power here being just the capacity to do stuff, to be able to also communicate. So if we start standing or sitting, we want to get into a state of stillness. And the idea here that I, I'd like to use is to feel first, then do. And what the feeling does is it creates, a, by consciously activating your sensory neural network, particularly at the feeling level, you are then able to activate a different part of your brain than the one that usually is creating, generating lots of noise, your default mode network. So if we want to step outside the default mode network, network and be able to just move into the present, so just begin by feeling the contact of your left foot on the floor. And notice just by doing that, if you don't get into a story about it, if you just feel it, here you are. You're back in the present moment. There's nothing else going on but now. You're not, we have moved outside of the story for the, for the moment. Now let go of that and feel the contact of your right foot on the floor. And notice that immediately you go into a, a state of presence. You're here, you're now. So what we're doing here is by just getting familiar with the simplicity of that and also realizing it's not terribly dangerous to do that, then we can kind of coax the mind out of its protective shell of thinky, 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 trying to protect us against danger and try to resolve things of the past and predict the future and, and come up with colorful ways of describing the event that is me. And um, instead, we're just here and there's, we're in the gap between thoughts. So the question is, people who can get to this place, then the sense say, yeah, but how do I function in this place? So now we're going to play around with that a little bit. We're going to, first of all, control the nervous system. We've already done that by feeling the left foot, feeling the right foot. But let's, uh, let's continue to do that. So feel the put your hands in your lap and on your on your knees and, and and feel your left knee with your left hand and when you do that you're activating the right side of your brain your right hemisphere that controls the left side of your body so here you are you're feeling your your left knee with your left hand and that's that's kind of cool we got that oh okay 
you're, you're feeling it with the right hemisphere. Now we're going to feel the right knee with the right hand. And we're using the left hemisphere. And you don't have to think about the, the left, right hemisphere. It's just know that that's what's happening. And that, you know, it's good to know that because it puts it in a contact and say, okay, I can control which side of my brain I want to, I want to use just by consciously, volitionally feeling something. So now feel your left hand with your right knee. A little, little trick here. You may have to move your hand a little bit just to give your knee a head start because you might not be as acutely aware of sense, sensory information through your, your knee, but do that and notice that, okay, other parts of the brain starting to light up when we do that, just because we're, we are actively, actively activating the uh, different parts to make these things happen. Now we'll shift over to the right and feel your right hand with your right knee. And you may feel electrical activity or blood flow in you know, different parts of your brain than you're accustomed to, and that's cool. So just as we are in a state of stillness, we can start to notice the motion in stillness. And you can, with practice, you can learn to light up different parts of your brain consciously. And there are machines which will reflect that back to you. And so that's kind of cool. And you get to get the confidence to know that something's going on there. It's not just your imagination that, oh yeah, you're, you're, you're actually controlling your nervous system. And you're going between thought and no thought. So now we're gonna feel with the left hand. We're gonna feel the left knee with the left hand. So that's a, we're using the right hemisphere of the brain to, to, to handle that sensory information. And I want you to pick up your right hand and reach out with it. So what are we doing here? While we are feeling with the left hand, we're also activating the motor function with the right hand using the left brain. So not, we're, not only have we, we're gonna bring it back now, bring the right hand back, still feeling that left hand, bring that down and so we're, we're consciously activating stuff that which is ordinarily happening at a pre-conscious level. We're consciously activating the left, the left, uh, the right side of the brain with the right hemisphere with the, with the left hand and the, where the left side of the brain, but also the motor function with the, with uh, the right hand. So we're now we're going, we're starting to get, more complicated in this, but you can see it's actually something which these are activities which you're fairly familiar. They're, uh, it's not something other. All we're doing is we're just breaking it down so we can see it as a, uh, you know, oh, this is what I'm doing. Because when we get into doing more complex activities that we still need to do that. What happens is whenever, let's say, you're doing a Tai Chi form and you're kind of challenged by it or you're learning a new form, say something like that, there is a tendency to get into the do, do, do mode. What do I do next? What do I do next? Oh, where do I put my hand? What do I put my foot? Oh, you know, and then you get caught up in that and then you are no longer in that super conscious state. You're back in the thinky, thinky mode. And um, which is fine you know, until you lay it in. And then once you're familiar enough with it, then you can go back and do this. Because when I say feel first, then do, that's in everything. Not just when you're doing a Tai Chi form, but, you know, you can do it anytime, any place. And what that means is that you are then entering this quality of Wei Wu Wei into your entire life you're able to shift into the radical present anytime you want. And you're then 
able to access parts of your nervous system which are largely hidden from you most of your life. So, you know, just from your five senses about, you know, it's about a million to one reduction from what you're able to sense through your five senses to what you're able to consciously process. If we turn the light inward to your to interoception, to what's going on inside your body, then it goes it goes into the trillions because you've got trillions of cells and they're all talking to you very quietly and you're never going to hear most of their voices um, and never be able to recognize them or call them by name, but you can be aware of much, much more. So last, I think last week we were talking about feeling your heartbeat, feeling your pulse, feeling the flow of blood through your veins. It's something that if you go into stillness, it becomes something you can do. And not only that, but it is very helpful. If you're breathing, you don't want to just let the breath happen to you. You want to feel it. You want to feel the breath and feel that this is a participatory event. You are breathing. And you get, you get to be involved at consciously with the process. It's, since it's mostly happening at a pre-conscious level, whenever you take over your consciously breathing, even for uh, you know seconds, for a breath, you have the opportunity then to shift your nervous system. And, and if you breathe diaphragmatically, you have a tendency, you can also go not just to the sensory and the motor, but also the autonomic nervous system. So you can calm your shit down by feeling your breath. So we, we this way wu way goes back to doing based in non-doing. If you are able to establish a state of being first, we do that by accessing through the feeling state, then you're able to then do in a very conscious way, which is the secret to higher level Kung Fu of all sorts, but particularly Tai Chi Chuan. So um, now I've been talking a while now. Anybody have any questions or thoughts on this they want to uh, want to share? Richard. Um, I it's preaching to the choir, but my experience as we're doing this is that uh, the difference in having my jade pillow open and or not is profound. Uh, at every moment, uh, the, the difference is a rush of sensation. So I'm getting more and more sensitive to that all the time. Yeah. Terrific. Good. Thank you. I, I appreciate that hearing that. That's good. Good. Stan, you had something. Uh, yes, uh, uh, in that second part where you're feeling uh, uh, the right knee with the left, uh, do you, are you placing the hand on there or are you going through the rest of the body? I think I sort of missed that point. So let's just do something visible. Okay, I'm going to put my, my right hand on my left shoulder. Oh, okay. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to feel my shoulder with my hand. Right. Okay, I feel my left shoulder with my right hand. Now I'm going to feel my right hand with my left shoulder. Yes. Okay, so it's, it, and you can do the crossover. You can do it, you know, linear, or you can do it crossing over either, either way, both are, both are fun. You know, you can use mm. your, your, grab your left wrist with your, with your right hand and do it that way, you know, and then, and then you're you're playing back and forth. So again, we're what we're doing is we're learning to 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 take control of the hardware that is uh, the, that we we've been kind of blundering around through with uh, you know with for 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 decades, and we're learning to actually get in there and do it. And I think that there's you know 
huge benefit to be had from 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 any awareness you bring to your body mind not the least of which is your ability to meet the moment because anytime you do that your ability to meet the moment is enhanced okay then so when i say i see alpha and the omega it's that's we start with presence we start with this clear mind state and then we explore we we do our dance, we do whatever, and then we come back to it. We come back to the stillness and rinse and repeat. You know, it's uh, just, and it keeps it keep going on. It's a dance that, that, that never ends. And um, to the degree that you can participate in it, that is to actually do this rather than just have it happen to you, you're an active participant in life, and you're 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 the uh, you know you're the, the the game maker, not just a, a piece on the board. Okay, so that's that that's a different that's a different quality, different way of, of, of being. In particular, when we're talking about Tai Chi, we're not talking about passively going through our motions and just kind of, oh, just kind of letting things kind of roll through us. We want to actually do it. We want to do our Tai Chi and simultaneously have it done to us. Because when you participate, whenever I do this, it, there's equal parts me and my environment participating in that event. And so to the degree that I can listen simultaneously to the doing, I'm able to feel the motion, I feel my hand moving through space, feel what's going on there, feel what's happening in my external environment, what's happening in my internal environment. And it's way too much for my puny little conscious mind to handle, but in a super conscious state, I can keep expanding my awareness and be able to identify these, these patterns that are happening at a, uh, you know, on a, uh, on a much bigger scale even if I can't wrap my, my tiny little brain around it in the moment. So then we, then we get into these experiences of that which is much greater than, than us. Um, anybody else? Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Scott. Okay, so um, one of the groups that I, um, belong to somebody had posted about um uh, inner, your inner smile um inner smile they were saying the i think it was that da da Taoists, like uh -huh. always walk through life with an inner smile okay yeah, i don't know if you've heard it heard the yeah, term. Yeah. montak chia was uh was a, a big uh, proponent of that decades ago so i've been kind of playing with it and it seems like it's same family, different genus from what we're doing here, right? I, I think that they're, they're closely related. If you can feel your inner smile, you know, what's happening is you are changing your vibration because it's a different, it cues different responses in your nervous system, it cues different responses in your endocrine system to have that going on. And I'd say that you know it, it's certainly a uh, a great exercise to play with because it's uh, uh, you know I guess I I've gotten to a, it comes quite naturally for me so there's there's that sense you know of of that there's a sense of well being that comes with that and with that is you know peace of mind comes with that as well whenever you have that inner smile going all the time you don't worry about things that a lot of people do you're just like yeah okay you know you, you recognize that you you have certain skills that enable you to get through life and, and until you can't anymore but that's okay so that's that's the way it's always been and that's that's that what we that's what we signed up for but if you approach it with that inner smile then it's more fun than going in with your you know your inner scowl <laughs> Cool. Anybody else? Okay. Let's uh, 
Let's do um, Yang Cheng Fu's 13 original postures, but with this as our, our, um, our guide through it. We're going to really, the, the, the point of emphasis as we do this is to, um, doing based in non-doing. So that is doing based in being and we access the state of being through the, 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 the feeling. So we kind of played with this uh, a couple of months ago when we talked about there's that point in the pendulum swing where it turns around and there's a, a point there of stillness when it goes, the trajectory is, is no longer going this way, it's going back the other way. There's that turnaround, which is happens for a zero duration. So there's, if the, the energy is at its peak in those moments. So the same thing's happening here with Whenever you are accessing the stillness, prior to the movement, you have maximum energy in the system. And so by doing that, you know, your awareness changes, your energy changes, your presence changes. And it has a, and kind of, it fits in with what you're just talking about there, Scott, that is your inner smile. It has a similar kind of effect to that. That is a highly coherent state, which then nourishes all your your entire internal environment. So let's uh, let's uh, let's do it nice and slow, and really emphasize the the feeling. Emphasize those moments of stillness between the yin and the yang. So. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit as we're going through it and uh, just follow along as best you can. If you know the form, you know, uh, great. Um, but the main idea is to, is to use it as a meditation. So begin with your feet heels together, toes apart. And we're gonna get the three pillars in. You'll feel the balls of the feet, reach with the crown, open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back, allow your way loo to drop. Feel the poles in opposition between your Mi Wan at the crown and the Wei Lu at the coccyx. You feel that effect on your body. Point and reach with your index fingers. You feel the energetic coherence throughout the whole system. Your whole body mind becomes unified. There's a state of wholeness. Reach with, with your elbows. Your arms are rounded and this opens the shoulder joints. Turn, just relax your hip joints. Good. Now feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, release down. So this is a yin move. Just feel that, feel the stillness, and then turn as the yang. Pick up your left heel and sink into your right leg and feel that. Step out, empty step. Just feel that. 
Now feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee and spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the left quad, the left leg. And then turn. Feel the balls of both feet, set both knees and bow forward. Release and feel your center over the balls of your feet. Your body is forward. And then straighten up, keeping the way the body's mass over the feet. Reach with your wrists. Relax your shoulders and your elbows. Reaching up with the wrists. Reach with the fingers. Open the joints. Feel the space between your shoulder blades opening. Bow. Reach down with your elbows. Your wrists. Straighten up and as you do so, reach down with the fingers and open the joints. And feel the chi rushing into your hands. Feel this. Feel your blood filling up. Expanding your capillaries. Your Enhancing your microcirculation as you do this. You're reaching with the crown. Reaching with the elbows, reaching with the fingers. And even though you're reaching, you are not tensing your muscles. Your muscles are very relaxed. So there's tensegrity without tension. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the right. Release, so just feel into that, feel, you're loading up that left leg, left claw, emptying out the right. Now turn, and as you turn, your right arm circles up, Reaching with the right, the fingers in the right hand, opening, reach down with the fingers in the left hand. Feel your left hand. As you reach with that, with the right. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. So you're feeling that spiraling down to the left. You're loading up the right claw. Now turn, whole body turns, reach with your right elbow. If your hand comes across, your left hand, feel that as it starts to circle up to come up parallel with the right. So your weight is primarily in your right leg. About 70%. Feel the stillness there. Feel the potentiality that's forming in the body. Like drawing back a bowstring. Now feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee and spiral down to the right. You're loading up the right, the left quad. Spiraling to the right, so you're feeling that emptiness there. The, this is a yin move. You're transitioning. Feel that and while simultaneously while feeling it, begin to move, reaching with the elbow, right hand reaches down. Feel as you do. Now 
Feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Loading up the right claw. Feel that, feel your, the crown of your head, feel your fingers and turn. So as you're turning, this is where you're activating the motor function, the doing based in non-doing, based in feeling. Reach, open. Feel the stillness. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right. You're loading up the right claw. So we can take a step with the left foot. You pick up the left heel. So now you step out a little bit with the left foot. Establish your position without leaving the right leg. So now you feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee down to the right and then turn. So the spiraling down establishes the yin and the turn of the waist is the yang. Reach and step in the right foot. To the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. Crow down to the left. Turn to the right. As your hand comes in front of your face, fingers come together and form a bend at the wrist, form the bird's beak. To the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, turn to the left as you reach out with the right wrist. Reach with the crown. Feel your left elbow, your left hand. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right. Step forward with the left, or step out with the left foot. Feel the ball, push the knee, Set the knee, spiral down to the, to the right, set your left elbow, left hand comes up, open. Feel that open space in your arm, between your arms. And then Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and turn the waist, pivot on the right heel, rotate the left forearm. And hands come down, step in. Take a deep breath. Exhale, clear. Dissolve the energy. Uh, grab a seat, please. How'd that go? Good, 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 good. Richard. It just occurs to me that we should be perhaps um, feeling the floor beneath our right foot with our right foot and, and et cetera, wherever we can make a connection like that. You're talking about in that form or anytime? In, 
in any in any time. Yes. You yes. can feel you can feel the other with the with the same. Um, right. And to the extent that you can do that, you are able to access that superconscious state and have just change your baseline of awareness. So there's a, an enhanced whole brain integration that is occurring and you're incrementally creating new neural connections every day. You're creating a whole new state of awareness, one that you've never inhabited before for any length of time, but you're creating it as your, you know, your, your go-to place. You'll get mail there. And that's the, uh, you want, you want to be able to do it, be able to, to function. And then with that, the familiarity that comes with that, then you're able to function in all the drudgeries of life and uh, with that inner smile happening all the time. Cause it's like, you know, you got, you, you got a secret going on there that, you know, you're, you're, you're tuned in, you're, you're, you're tuned into the, to, to the pulse of life with each, with each moment. And, you know, it's kind of fun. Do, do you feel the space around your, your right elbow with your right elbow? You can. You ask me, do I, or does one? Do I? Oh, sure. Sure. You can, you know, but that's just, it's just slowing down the chatter slowing down the obsessive noise that gets generated by your default mode network enough to be able to hear the symphony that is occurring in each moment. And, you know, if, there, if there's too much static on the radio, you're not, you're not catching those, uh, the oboe part, you know, you're, you're just, you're just, you get, you're, you're I think, I'm trying, I think I'm trying to say this so many different ways that it becomes uh, that it becomes a usual thing to think. Or to I, I applaud that, Richard. I, I, I please carry on because I think you know every time we do this, you know, we, we attack it from a different direction. The, the light goes on for somebody else. You know, it's not just the immediate group here, but anybody on YouTube who wants to check out this video, you know. They might start with this video and they like, you know, oh, what's this about? You know, and like, you know, holy smokes, you know, there we're we're each of the even if there's some redundancy in, in our in our, what we're talking about, it's okay because this is going, you know, this is going out into the ether now. <laughs> so it uh, it things things can happen. Rick. Is it off? Hold on. Yeah. You're on. Uh, when I, I was set up for this when I was a child, I just realized it now. Jonathan, Jonathan Winters used to do a routine about a baby discovering its own ear. <laughs> and when the hand that. was moving, when the hand was moving, and then when it touched his ear, his face lit up. Mm. Wonder and discovery. Wonderful. And, and just like everything you've taught and everything I try to learn, um, I don't say it's not possible, and I seek that wonder with every second. So Beautiful. keep up the great work. Thank you. Yeah, good. Someone else had a hand up. Scott. Yeah, that's why I've been enjoying practicing the smile thing. What I've been doing is when, I'm, when the brain starts doing the thinky thinky thing, I just, you know, smile internally, and it takes my mind into my body and out of my dopey head that's telling me silly stories beautiful it's it's really you're substituting a highly coherent waveform for the noise right which which is great that's a great idea yeah great idea that was the whole exercise was great by the way great so smiley smiley cures thinky thinky <laughs> Okay, anybody else? All right, okay. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Love you all. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Maria. Thank you, Maria. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.